Well, hello, hello, hello. I was going to try to pretty it up real quick, but uh, this mouse is doing its own thing. <laughs> well, there we go. Okay, there we go. We got a design. Hey, picture frame. Well, God bless you, God keep you, and it's been a morning. I mean, it's been a morning, it's been a morning, it's been a long day. I don't know. I've been going through changes with my teeth and just looking at life and talking to God. And um, that's why I haven't been here. But uh, even though I'm not allowed to attend school, God got me in school. And uh, I've been studying and reading up on some things about activism and uh ageism and poverty and uh I was uh I saw an organization online and uh it's called change.org and they asked me to become a member and I am a member. I am a member. It's called Change. Oh my God my two. C H A N G E Change dot org. They they uh they fight for rights. Uh, especially, uh, they fight for everybody's rights, but, uh, in particular, they was talking about this man, they was going to, uh, uh, he was on death row, let me start, I'm mixed up because I didn't give God the, the glory. God, I pray for the sick and poor all over the world, I pray for those that's living paycheck to paycheck, they, I'm not, they not even living paycheck to paycheck, they just living and getting a paycheck and then not enjoying the money that they work for. I pray, Lord Jesus, for these people. I pray, Lord Jesus, for them that got and them that don't have. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, for those that don't have. I pray, Lord, that you give us and inspire us ways to receive money. Let it fall from heaven, Lord. Give us ideas, dreams, and visions, Lord, to better our situations, to pay our bills and everything, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, for the children of this world, Lord. I pray that you bestow on them some gifts and some dreams, Lord. Uh, give them visions, Lord, to overpower the wickedness of this world, Lord. Give them the tools they need to stop the violence in their communities. And I don't mean just violence, physical violence, Lord. Verbal violence. Violence, Lord, to me, is when you stop a child from dreaming. When a child picks up a book and they don't see them in it, Lord. Let's change that. Send the children to change that, Lord. Send that right away. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Okay, now I'm on point. I had to give it to him. Uh, what I'm talking about is uh, uh, I joined a group called Change. I'm not showing my face right now because uh, you see my feet, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, so let me block that out too. Uh, like I said, there's some things I have to do. Uh, uh, for, for one... I have started a petition uh, concerning my mother and the lack of care that she had received. Uh, I'm fighting for that to get her medical records and get recognition uh, concerning her case. Uh, I plan on filing some more petitions concerning other things. But what I want to say right now is that I need your help. I need you to help me to help us. And, um, uh, uh, so that's the other process that I'm going about. I need some more people to join me. Uh, what came to mind again, uh, Jericho 10. I don't know what God's talking about with that, but that jumped in my spirit. I was thinking of a name, uh, a little sad name, to uh, call some helpers. And uh, right now, the, it just popped back in my spirit, Jericho 10, because we want to tear down walls. Hey! And so um, I need 10, 10 people. Uh, Strong people, believers, strength and courage. They believe in uh, uh, nonviolence. God's pouring into me, so as he pours into me, I'm going to pour out to you. Uh, he's saying people that's a stickler for justice, you know. And I don't care about your race, but uh, that's not really important. I, I want uh, God will reveal to me what you're about anyway. You know, uh, you don't have to have college degrees and all that. You just have, I just want that spirit. I want that spirit of believing in God. I definitely want that. Please come around if you believe in God and you believe in justice for all. 
that you want to help the uh the cause. You want to help people that's in poverty. You want to help people that's living paycheck to paycheck. Cause I know what it's like. I'll be getting paid soon, and the money's old out. And I'm keep trying to get up, but every time I try to get up, I'm falling down. So I'm quite sure it's more of you like me. So um, right now, uh, I'm gonna give you a contact telephone number. And I'm gonna work on the website, and I want your input into it. And like I said, it better be the Jericho ten men and women. There is no specific age because wisdom can be in a child. So I don't have a specific age about that. I already sent a letter to this man that does a uh, prayer on my. Uh, I, I, I hear all the time, so uh, I'm, uh, I contact him to give me some more information on the destiny that God has me. Uh, going into and uh, uh, with that like I said I gotta get ready to bounce out of here uh, I'm gonna give you this telephone number I'm trying to find it I'm not doing what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it uh, it's a Wi-Fi phone number it's 502-547-4650. 502-547-4650. Uh, what I'm doing is right now, like I said, I'm looking for a Jericho 10. Uh, right now, they do not have to be right here in Louisville. Uh, uh, if you online, that'll be fine. You do not have to be present to have your voice heard. Um, like I said, uh, God's put in my heart and that's the direction I'm going into. Um, I want to bring about change. Uh, the church that I had attend, one of our motto, church mottos is, change people, change in the world. Um, I mean, it speaks value to, to what needs to be done. It's a sad society right now, community, leadership. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's all I can say. <laughs> that's my phone. Um, we need to address some issues. We need to help some people. We need to not keep talking about what we're going to do and what has been done. This is a new era. We need change. We need restoration right now. And like I said, if I don't wake up tomorrow and if I pass today, at least it will be on paper on videos that I spoke up about my God. I shared uh, his word. I shared what he was about. I did his will more than I did mine. I can't say that. I've lived a long time, but in, in the time I lived drinking or whatever I was doing, running the streets, I always had God on my heart, on my lips, and in my performance. So, yes, uh, I can't say without a doubt that I did his will, you know, and uh I'm a living testimony to that. Uh, like I said, often I need to be encouraged, but I want to encourage someone else, and I often do encourage people. I'm not I'm going to toot my own horn, but at the same time, God is teaching me now is the time to speak up about some victories that I have, have achieved. And like I said, with this one right here, I plan on achieving a victory. Uh, I need that word out. Uh, right now, like I said, uh, my activism Big word, uh, I want to, uh, God put this out of my heart. My mother's death is not going to be in vain for the fact that there's a lot of other elderly people. And at the end of the petition, like I said, it's my mother today and tomorrow it might be yours. There's a lot of elderly people, in particular black people, that are uh, in nursing homes. And it's not just that the parents lack them. I didn't place my mother in a nursing home, so let me go get that straight. I didn't put my mother in a nursing home. Some family member, I don't know how everything happened, but she was in there. But at the same time, she had dementia, you know, and, you know, uh, it was difficult for my family member to care for her. So I don't know what else, what happened after that, but I was near my mother at that time. But like I said, we need to start taking care of people. And if we cannot take care of our elderly parents, relatives in our own homes, then we need to find a place for them to be that they will be in it will be an extension of the family. The family will be allowed rights 
to that person. Um, and make sure, regardless of who has care of a person, this is what angers me, regardless if the state had custody of her, guardianship had custody of her or not, her children, myself, family members, when we suggested that she needed to be taken to the hospital, we wanted medical care for her. We were not talking about give her to us and send her out and all this type of thing. I'm talking about necessity, the care, well care. We want to care for her. That should have been allotted to us. That's my anger. That's my point. That's why I want a petition saying it don't matter who's taking care of you. If I say that she needs some help, then you should have given her that help. You know, I don't know if it's a color thing. I don't know what it's about, but I know that me and my cousin Carrie, he's a male. Me and him, we had already, we had written to the ombudsman. We had written to the state attorney general's office. I have paperwork. My cousin has paperwork. We have, we have all kind of records. Where we, this is not something I just started, so don't get that twisted. This has been a long journey for the last three to four years. Well, let me back up. Let's go six. Because when she was first placed in there, everything was chaotic. So later on, about that, that year, about two years after she was in, the complications came from the first nursing home she was in, which ended up being shut down. Well, well let me see. They didn't shut it down. What they did was to maneuver that. They changed the name. But hmm, that's on the web page. It's on, on my mother's. It's on the web page. You'll see it. Uh, so, like I said, we've been fighting a long time, and we haven't received any justice. So now we're going to the petition. And then, like I said, what I plan on doing with the rest of the petition, I'm going to take them and show the rest of the letters. Show the letters where me and my cousin, we had called up on all type of people, the social worker that was over her in particular. So I'm not telling you some lies and something I made up. Oh, my mother's dead, and now I'm hysterical, and I'm depressed, and she's going off, and it's just she's grieving, and she's just letting the app. No, baby, it's not that boo-boo. I'm talking about stuff. We've been fighting for the four or five years about this situation, talking about the abuse and the neglect of my mother. And not only my mother, there was other patients in there, but I can't speak on their behalf. I only can speak on my mother's behalf of what i seen and what i witnessed. That's what I can talk about. What me and my cousin, because my cousin was faithful going up there praying for my mother, taking her little teddy bear, taking her to word. He's the person that was up there at the hospital. We have it on video where he was standing up feeding her when they was talking about she didn't want to eat, but they taking a sponge and putting it over my mother's mouth and taking and giving her some food. But she's eating. But first she said she wasn't eating. But I, So anyway, this is not my podium right now to discuss that. I already have a petition started. Anybody needs to know, want any more information pertaining to that petition, like I said, I'm going to put this telephone number on there and they can call me. But like I said, I'm, um, I'm looking for people to join my organization. And my organization has been around since 2007. That's how long I've been dreaming. And I wanted to open a homeless shelter. So my heart has always been for the poor. And when I opened it, I was in my drinking phase. So that goes to show you that drinking can outweigh, does not outweigh God's will for your life. So God always had a hand on me, and he had it on my heart about poor people, homeless people, and the youth. Because the youth is what's going to change this world. Some minds are already set by them being older that they're not going to change. But the youth of today, we can change their minds and put them on a positive direction. And that's what I intend to do. But my organization is Vigilantes for Jesus. The original name is Homeless Shelter and Youth Center. I'm registered with the Secretary of State. I have a tax ID number. Uh, if you need that, that can be given to you. Um, I am incorporated. Like I said, right now, it's me. And I believe it's some invisible help. There's <laughs> some blessings behind me. So I'm not going to say it's just me. Because I, I, I know the hand of God and I'm, the hand of some people have been behind giving me help. And I know there's people that's very important that have been listening to my, my videos and, and waiting for me to open my mouth and say something. And um, I'm not uh, naive. I am very aware of your help and your participation in, in, in what's going on in my life. And I, to God be the glory. If it wasn't for you, yeah. For your grace, for your mercy, for your prayers, where, where would I be? 
uh, there was an older lady at base. I'm going to shout this out real quick. There was an older lady at base when I was, my mind was just tore up. My mind was just ripped. And Satan's playing his little games with my mind. And uh, uh, I was in church and uh, 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 they were singing uh, Break Every Chain, Tasha Kyle's song. And uh, I just knew my mind had been changed and renewed. And the little old lady, she always pops up at the word this time. She's a sharp little lady. I mean, she dressed sharp, nice, big old, nice rings. Don't nobody try to rob <laughs> But big old beautiful rings on. I mean, she's just a joy. And she pulled up on me one time and she said, yeah. She said, I was praying for you. She said, I was always praying for you. I don't know the lady's name to this day. I didn't bother asking because you praying for me. I don't need your name. But often she would sit by me. And if a guy was sitting real close to me, she would come over and she'll wedge in between. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh Lord Jesus! I'm telling you, uh, just a hand of God. You just don't know how powerful He is, how much He loves and He cares for us. All you do is just give your will to Him and let Him work with your life. Oh yeah, you're gonna have ups and downs. You're gonna have moments that you like. Hey, I'm ready to give up. Believe me, anybody listen to all my tapes from the beginning to where we are right now, you're gonna be like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? She's a soldier. I got battle scars that you wouldn't believe. But like I said though. Somebody prayed for me, you know, and I used to think that was just a cliche when people said, somebody prayed you in, somebody prayed. No, nah, I'm for real. I knew my mother prayed for me when I was ripping and running the streets, you know, after doing God knows what. I knew mama was praying for me. But nowadays, people that don't know you to pray for you, that's very awesome. I love it. People giving you support and you don't see, you, you know, you don't know who the person is giving you support, but it's there. And, um. Uh, so, like I said, it's, it's wonderful. And I thank God for all of the support, seen and unseen. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, my heart, you know, tears are coming in my eyes. I thank you. I thank you, you know. And if it wasn't for your support, like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be saying what I'm saying. And uh, like I said, uh, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. And uh, like I said, uh, I'm uh, I'm looking for uh I'm looking for ten and like I said I, I gotta go in I'm talking to, I need to talk to some more people you know I need to discuss some things with some more people and uh but that's already that's already been written right there uh, the Jericho ten uh, I need to check on that name but that's what they're going to be called the Jericho ten and those people will help establish this organization we will reach out to the community that it is lacking the proper care and the proper representation. Uh, that's what we will we will be doing. Uh, uh, there are some things on my mind. God put it put some things in my spirit on that job. Uh, pray for me about that job because it's uh, it's not so much God fighting him, but the person that was coming against me. But there are some other things that's going on and. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things going on. Just pray for me, please. Pray for my finances. That God release my finances and put me in the direction He want me to. Well, oh Lord Jesus, like I said. Oh Lord, oh God, talking to me. Like I said, there's some things uh, with my neighbor next door. Like I said, she's a thorn in my side, and uh, I'm getting ready to reveal her to you all. And I'm just waiting to make sure that it's not vengeance because when I reveal her, I want it to be from God. I want it to be all God. I don't want it to be me. I don't want to be vengeful. That's not me. God said, I'll fight your battles if he said still. So it's not going to be on me. So I'm going to pray some more about it and then I will reveal uh, about her. And uh, I reveal the letter that I have written pertaining to her and what other actions need to be taken. Um... Uh, You know, uh, yesterday, like I said, uh, she had company over and they didn't really show out all on the back porch like they usually do. But uh, I refused to allow her to, to dominate my joy. Uh, also, what I was thinking is for a brief moment, fear came over me because it's like when you speak up against 
the wrongs in society, when you start becoming an activist, there are many people that don't like what you're doing. And so then you have to think, do you want to go on or do you want to stop? Because you're putting your life on land. And, and in situations, especially pertaining to my neighbor, you know, I, I, I worry about, I, I fear for my life. I fear for my uh my home uh, ever since I lived here about me being the only black person and at first I was surrounded by four white people now it's three and now I have more black people in the neighborhood I'm saying this and I'm I'm just telling you and um fear kind of overtook me for a minute and it was like you know you're saying these things and you want to do this as if you are as a guy and then it was like, okay, I see this is God, but then it's like God, okay, like you know, I'm I'm the only one person, and you want me to jump out here, and I'm saying all these things, you know what I'm saying? Who got my back? And then you know, just just, just he, I didn't even hear a whisper. It's like I I just knew he got me, you know what I'm saying? And he said, it, I, I mean, the truth is the truth, you know. Um, like I said, that, that fear of retaliation, you know what I'm talking about. Fear of retaliation, when you start speaking your mind, when you start speaking about issues that's this, you get retaliation. But also, what came to mind is that my enemies know my address because I filled out the paperwork for Chris, at Christian Courage to get my mother's medical records. So then I was like, if my enemies know my address, if any fear should have been in me, it should be in me as far as they're concerned, and I have a lot of it. Well, she's my enemy. I'm quite sure there's other enemies, but they know my address. So <laughs> you might as well know my address. I live at 2711 Pioneer Road, Louisville, Kentucky, 40216. Um, I had placed my address out online anyway before, and really with society and with the way the the uh <laughs> Google. People know where I live anyway. Uh, like I said, um, I'm not standing alone. I got God. If God be for you, who could be against you? And like I said, my spirit was, it, 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 it jumped in the spirit for a minute. And like I said, you know, like I always, Janice, you know, you got all these enemies around you. And I don't like that name, Janice. Like I said, I will be referred to as Buchanan. I like my last name, so I'm going to keep using that. And I'm gonna switch it around so you can. And, and uh, it, it took me for a minute, and it was a brief minute. But in the brief minute, God turned it around, and He was like, "Whom shall I fear? Man, all He can do is kill your body. He can't kill your soul. He can't kill your dream. He can't stop you. What's in your mind? What's in your head? He can't kill the pictures and the visions and that." He did. My mother told me this a long time ago. She said, either you're going to stand for something or you're going to file for anything. And she said, the bigger they are, the harder they file. And so my mother's five foot. I don't know if mom really fast. I was probably like four or five. We hit a four or seven or something. You know, if she could be bold and she went to live to be 90 years old, and I mean, she was swinging and fighting up on everybody. I mean, that woman was just popping people left and right when she wanted to. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about a good day. She didn't take nothing out for nobody. So how can I be afraid when I came from somebody that's strong? You know, my daddy's a big man. He fought in World War II. He was a soldier. You know, I can't let my daddy down. You know, I take after my daddy. I know more than my mother. But um, I think my sad, not my daddy's sad. But like I said, you know, God for me, who could be against me? And the point I'm making is I'm not in fear. I'm not in fear anymore. What they say, walk lightly, carry a big stick. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm not worrying about that, you know, I'm not worrying about that, but I will put on record, <laughs> I will put on record my thoughts, just like I just did, and it make society aware of the situation that I am in, and that I endure every day, you know, like I said, I live in a neighborhood, I've been living here three and a half years, the chick next door I try to talk to, but then she, she wants to gossip and she's throwing stuff in my yard. My tires have been lowered. 
uh, every, all, my, every, all the years I was here, my car, my tires, I had a, a Cadillac, it was a big scratch on the car. I've had all kinds of things done to my house and to my yard. She's been, she admitted she was in on my property. We wasn't speaking, but yeah, you was on my property. And I, I, I said, you know, I'm worried about it. But you was on my property and me and you hadn't talked at the time, but you pulled my garbage can up to my house. Why was you on my property? So yeah, that's why I have, uh, we have neighborhood watch and I have some people that's in my neighborhood that monitor my house when I'm at work and when I'm away. So when I leave my house, I have to ride around the block two or three times in different directions to make sure that she's not over here or any of them are doing anything to my house. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God, God said, don't wait. He's saying, talk now. Also, since I've been living where I live, my mail has been stolen. That had been reported to the Postal Service. They had to send a detective or whoever it is with the uh, uh, United States Postal Service to come out here and monitor it. They reimbursed me for my mail that was stolen. I had been receiving mail without any, any theft. Everything was okay. One day, one mail came up missing. And it wasn't something that you really would see it was pertaining to school. It was a, 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 the little code that you need to get online. So it was just a little package. Somebody stole that since I've been here. My flowers was dug up. Uh, my granddaughter seen her throwing peanuts in my yard. And uh, which would cause the, the squirrels to come into the yard and dig up the plants. So I had holes everywhere. So now when you look at my yard, you'll see a lot of bricks around because of that. You'll see fake flowers because of her doing. Um, uh, she used to stand and look in my door. I mean, I'm talking about total 100% harassment. And like I said, I have everything on paper and stuff like that. I have to, uh, I, end up, I end up showing you. And I have video of the father's day when they was out there just parading around. And she had already received a letter to show you that she don't have no regards for trying to, to cover the fence up. She's illegally over, number one, she's illegally over the limit. The fence, the back fence is supposed to be six feet. She's up for about eight feet where she has a deck in the back and a pool. So, like I said, uh, if those are things I deal with. There are two people across the street. They hadn't spoken to me. One in particular had never spoke to me. The guy, he spoke to me what was it early this year, last year or something. He waved or something. Other than that, they stayed to themselves. Plus, I heard him make a racist remark. Uh, I was sitting on the porch. Uh, but to God be the glory. I'm still here. You know, I'm still here. I'm still here. But it is intimidating to live in a place when you know people don't like you for the color of your skin. I can talk about that. So when I get my Mighty Ten, my Jericho Ten, when you join me, these are the issues that's going on in my life. So you will be aware of it. So you won't be coming and joining something type thinking that, oh, well, she's not going to talk about black issues. She's not going to talk about racism. She's just going to talk about poverty. No, boo-boo. I'm going to talk about everything that has affected my life that I know has affected other people's lives. That's what I'm going to talk about. So when you join me, this is what's going on. I'm saying this so there will, no, will be no secret. So you will be aware of who I am and what I stand for and what I have been standing for and what I have been fighting and what I have been enduring in my life. You know, my life hasn't been no cakewalk. So that's what I'm saying. And like I said, these are the people that's around me that want to smile. And like I said, uh... You don't like me because of the color of my skin. You do look, they do little pickings. They imitate me. I put up certain curtains, then they try to follow through. But yet, you don't speak to me. So, to me, that's a little harassment. But I'd rather have somebody copy me than me copy somebody else. I'd rather be a leader than a follower any day. So, it's all good right there. You know what I'm saying? But, like I said, if I had my druthers, <laughs> feel that. If I had my druthers, I would rather leave, I would rather move out of this house. I really, I really would. I like the house, but other than that, the neighborhood, no, I do not like it. I have neighbors that are friendly, little young girl. I have people that I speak to, you know, I speak to on a regular basis. Some of the white people from the other area, every now and then they speak. I'm not one of those people that sit in and, you know, run up and down the street. I'm not that type of person. But other than that, speak. But as far as this street right here, it's not. You know, it's, it's been a uh, it's been something else, believe that. It has been something else, but I would like to move. Uh, not because I'm afraid, no. 
I wouldn't want I don't want to move because I have fear. I don't have no fear no more. Like I said, I'd rather stand for something than to fight for anything. So I'm not worrying about her. You know, I'm not worried about her or any of them. You know, you do you, I do me. You stay over there where you are, I stay over here. I had a fence up at first, and to be nice, I tried to take it down. But now, she, 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 she slow. She don't comprehend nothing. She, she still want to keep stuff going, peeping in the door, doing little stuff. And like I said, the way it's just, a, it's just a, it's a mess. And like I said, though, I'm glad in the long run. I'm glad the guy put her as a thorn in my side because if she hadn't been be showing her racism side, which I've never experienced any racism to this level ever in my life. I've never been around nobody racist like this. Never, ever. No matter where I live. All my life, I've lived around white people. This is new. This is new. Whoa, it's, and ooh, that's, that's what's scary. It's new. I've never seen it before. You know, and uh, if she hadn't been doing what she was doing, I would not be doing what I'm doing. It, 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 she's a big factor in this, me speaking out and opening up public about what's going on in my life, life and dealing with racism firsthand, not secondhand, not thirdhand, firsthand racism. And yet she tries to twist it. You wouldn't believe how she tries to twist it, but it's still racism. Like I said, all we can do is pray. Oh, let me stop it. I need to quit that. That's what they were saying that the mirror was saying. Nah, we don't need to just pray. Pray and faith without action is dead. We must do something. We got to move our hands. We got to move our feet. We have to sign petitions. We have to sign papers. We have to make ourselves and voices heard. And we can't do that if we sit and still and we sit and silent and we keep killing each other and we keep acting out and tearing up our own neighborhoods, stealing out of our stores, making our stores barricades in order to go into the store you have in a Pacific store you got to be guided a certain way they done blocked off ways so you got to go in the store and the front door the side door and doors locked and things locked up behind the counter and all this come on now it's like we're in a war zone you know some type of movie you know some type of scientific movie or something you know that's going on we have to change this we got to change it. We can't keep asking for other people to change it. We have to come together. Jericho 10, let's come together and change these things. This racism thing right here, that can be, that can be taken care of and abolished in a different way. I'm not so, totally concerned about that right there. Like I said, I've spoken on it. I didn't know I was, so I've spoken on that issue. But the main issue is that I'm, of my concern is the youth of today. The youth not having a place to go and play and participate in sports. And that, I do understand, would have to be monitored because certain age groups are coming together and they already have uh, certain anger issues. So we will need a certain type of security to monitor that until we can learn that we are one and we don't need to fight each other. And I'm not just talking about black. I'm talking about anybody, any youth that want to come together to participate in sports and activities. So... Yeah, I, I would uh, I would encourage you to join me in this fight for civil rights, for justice, for anti-poverty. Uh, oh, by the way, as of today, unless it was in my spam mail, I have not heard anything from the Poor People's Coalition, so I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because I have written the paper online, maybe that's why they haven't uh, gotten back with me. Uh, maybe I needed to sign the card. I don't know. But I have not heard anything from them. Um, it's a good day. It's a good day. Um, like I said, every time when... Uh, <laughs> Like now, you know, hey, I'm laughing because I be laughing for this stuff and I be like, darn, Jenny, you're supposed to be, you should be sad, you know. And I'll be like, nah, you know, I start thinking how good God is. How good God's been to me. I've been in things, oh, Lord, I've been in battles you wouldn't believe. I've been in, in the dark where there hasn't been light and God has been there and he protected me and he watched over me. And it was one. I've been one person. But God said, one can chase a thousand. He said, two, how many? All right then. So I'm one person. But with God, I'm many. I'm, I, I, I got all I need. You know, I got all I need. I want the Jericho 10, but with God, I'm very powerful. You know, I'm very powerful with God. You know what I'm saying?
And like I said, I put out there my situation and my stance. You know, I'm not a fool. I'm not going to sit back and play stuff out because I know how people can retaliate and do stuff to you and do harm to you. And then when you confront them on it, everybody wants to play dumb. Oh, we don't know what she's talking about or she said it's not. It's put already on the plate. It's put out on the plate and it's served to you. I already told you my situation, my concern for my well-being, you know. And, um, woo, Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, if God be for you, who could be against you? You know that. It would have been nice, you know. I don't like seeing people get killed. It would have been nice, you know what I'm saying? Can you see a, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, oh God, I can't even think of his name. Moses is not your bad. Moses and Joshua, thank you Jesus, Joshua out there badly, Moses standing up on the field and he got his arms stretched out. And people winning when his arms is up there. When he put his arms down, they lose it. So can you imagine, can you imagine Joshua looking at him like, dude, if you don't hold your arms up, <laughs> hey, y'all get his arms and hold his arms up so we can hurry up and win this thing. So I can go on and get my eat on, man, get my drink on. Come on, dude, hurry up, man. Hurry up, man. Keep, dude, keep your arm. Do I need to come up and hold your arms up, Moses? Come on, man, so we can hurry up and knock this out. Because God already told us we're going to win, but in the meantime, I still got to be down here doing the battle. I got to come about physically. You feel me? Physically, I got to be up in here. You know what I'm saying? I got to do my part, and God's going to do his. But if I be weak down here in the battlefield, and you let them arms down again, <laughs> It's not going to be party. It's not going to be party. I'm going to have a whole lot of cuts of skies. I don't want. I don't want no battle skies. So come on, Moses. Y'all get up and hold his arms up so we can hurry up and knock this on out. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, oh, man. I just pray you get to know God more than I know him. Get to know him more than I know him. Get to walk with him and talk with him and just be as one with him. You know, start doing his will and not your own. You know, like I said, every time I look around and I get, I feel like I'm getting tired and I feel like I'm becoming drained. God will put some, some, some story. Or he'll put a person in my life and he renews my spirit. And I was listening the other day to a lady. She was speaking of, of some things that I was thinking about. She was talking about how God can give you your financial things. She wasn't just talking about all this stuff of prosperity preaching. But she was real. She was talking about what the Bible says in Malachi and other, other parts of the Bible, what it's talking about, about money. How you pray and you ask God. He would take and bestow some thoughts or maybe a vision or something on you, and it will help you get money. I He'll send you in the direction of a job. You got to pray and follow his will. And I was like, hello. And, you know, and then she talked mainly about where, where I was. And uh, uh, I heard the sermon, and I can't think of Reverend Carla or the other ladies talked about it. How sometimes, I think it was the other lady, I can't think it preached of, uh, she preached that Wednesday. She was talking about how sometimes we get out of God's order, you know what I'm saying, basically we fall down but we get back up, but when we fall down sometimes we want to stay down. And, so, and that's what I was thinking, I said, well maybe I missed something. You know, maybe God really didn't want me to go on this job. <laughs> Because I did a plan a different way. And then they, the lady hurried up and hollered, oh, well, do, do, do. And then I hurried up too and I heard the money amount. And to be honest, I did. I chased the money. So I might not be doing a job God wants me to do, but at the same time, I need the money. So I don't know. You know what I'm saying? God has always sustained me. God, he's, he's taking care of me. I don't even know how. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, he's just doing it. But... I don't want to keep on standing there being fed. I want to learn how to feed myself. You know, and I, but I don't want to be me. I want God to just give me what I need so I can do what he wants me to do. But I don't want to, because with me, you know, I do start taking out myself because I was already thinking, I need another job. You know, and I did apply for another job, but I was like, okay, I pulled two jobs. You know what I'm saying? I'm already registered with another job company anyway. So they call me every now and then. It's just not... I, it's not feasible to do that job in this one, but yeah, you know, yeah, I've been thinking about that. But then when the lady was talking, she confirmed what God had was already telling me not to do. 
she was saying, we want to run out here and get two or three jobs and then we're exhausted and we're not able to live our lives and then we break, you know, we have a heart attack, strokes and all these type of things, you know, and we're not pleased with our lives. And I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Okay, Lord, I'm listening. <laughs> you know, so like I said, when I, when I stray and I don't know, I feel like I don't know my way, God puts me back on path and I don't always have to be sitting in church. God will come to me in different areas. He'll come to me in different people. You know, and um, while I'm talking about that, my heart was a little heavy at work the other day. The little lady, the little white lady I told you that helped me out, she sat across the table and she kind of sat back and she looked. So I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering if they try to bring something heavy down on her or what, because she sat at a distance, but yet she looked, you know, and uh, she didn't say anything. I looked in her direction. She didn't really look back. So I think that she like, you know, I know how people, when you speak up, I know people giving her flat, and I know they don't like me, the dude in particular. They don't like, he don't like me on the job. And uh, so I'm not, uh, but I'm not worrying about it, you know, because just like God gave me that job, he'll give me another one. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I don't believe that this really was him anyway, because there's a lot going on with it. But I know the devil tried to fight me right there, you know, and he's constantly fighting me. You know, and uh, it's not a win or lose situation, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm always win. I'm not going to worry about it as long as I, I don't give up on God. As long as I keep doing His will, you know, I don't need to act out anything like that. You know, so, like I said, I just got to follow God's lead. And uh, when He tells me it's time to go, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not going to rush to make a decision about it. If they want me gone, then they'll go ahead and fire me. Uh, as a matter of fact, thank you, Jesus. You know how to keep everything on pace. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, I wasn't going to talk about it because it was too detailed, but uh, in my previous video, I was talking about how I, uh, I confronted the guy that was talking about me that brushed against me and all this type of stuff that kept getting in my face, threatening me, talking about he was going to write me up and all this stuff, and my quota and my work performance was weak and all this, and then his little HR backed him up, basically on what he was saying. So, uh, the little chick I was saying about the little chick that came in with me, how she was running, she moved away from me. She didn't have my back. She walked away from me. Basically, she got fired. <laughs> she didn't get fired. They gave her an alternative. Either she could get fired or else she could take and resign. And if she resigned, then she could come back next year. Hello. And so, you know, she ran up to me. Because see, that's what God does. I'm not saying that she was my enemy, but I'm saying that I've seen it. You know, she was running around. I already said it. You're running around everywhere. And and I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I, I don't know for sure. But I believe he has an agenda. Him in particular, he has an agenda. You know, I don't know who her supervisor was necessarily. I, I didn't get details about that. But, yeah. But, see, you ran away from me. And if you would have been talking to me, I'm not God. But I could have maybe offered you a suggestion. I've seen a way maybe you could have kept your job. But at the same time, I don't believe you were being honest with me. Because you try to tell me that you missed one day and all of a sudden they fired you. And me, I discussed it with, we was just talking about it with another person. Because you know certain people in the company, they already know stuff. You know that everybody be knowing stuff, knowing, knowing your business. So, uh, I believe she was late and it was other things. Like I said, you know, she's running around and you're supposed to be one place and you're another. So, it was a lot of things on her behalf. It wasn't just, you know, hey, they fired her because she was black or anything like that. It was neglecting of your job. You know, and then you want to play it off. But like I said, though, you running around smiling and laughing at me, and now you gone, and I'm still there. And so as a result of that, now some of the people want to take and come and sit around me and talk. And I'm trying to figure out, I don't know. I get, I don't know. I don't know what it's about. So I really don't care. I don't mind sitting to myself because I know what myself would do. <laughs> you know, I go about, I'm there to work, like I said. I'm not there to play and be everybody's friend. I go to work. I did finally meet a lady, you know, don't get it twisted. I talk to people, you talk to me, it don't matter what race you are. You know, I talk to a lot of people, but when we talking, we can't be working and talking at the same time, you know. And then when you strike up a conversation with somebody, there's lots of time here, they come trying to move you anyway. That's real talk. So that's why I said, you know, a lot of people trying to say about me now, why? You don't talk to me or say anything to me online, and a couple of them been there a long time. But I think when they, when they got rid of her, I seen a little bit that it frightened me. It frightened a lot of them. And it woke them up. You've been out here playing on a job, but he came after her. He came after me, but then he came after her. 
But you know, it's some other things going on. You know what I'm saying? You know, some people are carrying themselves. No person has a right. There's nothing that, let me state this. And uh, I used to, uh, I'll put it this way. I'm just going to say it. It doesn't matter what a woman wears. A person, she could be raped. They raped a nun before. She wearing a whole cloak. So it's not about how you dress that can get you that that can cause a person to rape you. Uh, but yeah, you know, sometimes sometimes some things go on and it needs to be looked at. It needs to be addressed. And which was weird, they was addressing it. It was real odd that it was being addressed. So some things have been going on. I seen a little bit of it, but it was more than what I seen that was going on apparently. Um, I'm gonna leave that there. You, you can kind of see in there. Anybody been working on a job a long time can read into what I'm talking about because I'm not gonna be direct about it because it's not an issue. It's not an issue for me to deal with. I go to work to do my job and I do it to the best of my ability. You know, and with what I see going on, I'm not trying to go with the company and join all of this. All of people writing on the board, all of this stuff they want to do and constantly getting on there complaining. I'm not going for that. I'm not getting into that because I know who my I know who my boss is. My boss is God, and if He put me there, He'll sustain me there. If He wants me to move, then He'll move me. So I'm not worrying about you no know, supervisor and all that. All I can do is the best I can do. I, I, all the extra stuff, you know, you trying to come at me with, it, that's not God. You know what I'm saying? That's not God. And so, uh, like I said, it is what it is. But just watch God show up and show out. Just watch it. You know, I, I just love it. I love it. Because I get to, I giggle. I be giggling a lot of times. Like, I'm, <laughs> like I just told y'all that, ooh, I'm worried about my well-being. I ain't worried about my well-being, but my well-being can be at stake. Feel that. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? God is my joy. You know, he's my joy and he's my peace. And, you know, I just be doing stuff and I just be laughing. And now I'm on her talking. It's going on 12 o'clock. I got to get ready to get out of here. But it's been nice talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Whoever's listening. But, uh, like I said, you know, uh, I don't know. Life is what you make it, you know. And from what I've been watching, you know, I've been watching and reading some books. Like I said, I'm not in school. But I, I, I've been picking up books and stuff like that. And I've been reading books. And I thank God, which amazed me. I had a book on the shelf. And this is weird. Because I used to like going to the Goodwill and picking up books. If I see certain books, I would pick them up and buy them. Now they get ridiculous. But thank God the library sells a lot of our books in there. But I have a book called Understanding Social Problems. I got it for probably 50 cents or maybe a quarter. And uh, it had been on my shelf for a long time. And it's got some garbage in here. <laughs> it's a college book. Cause it's got the price on the back. It's about Thompson. But it's got a lot of garbage in it. It's got a lot of garbage in it. Uh, I'll show you the front of it. And the process you'll see. Uh, it's a book called uh, Social Problems. Understanding Social Problems. And uh, like I said, I, I'm reading it. You know what I'm saying. Understanding Poverty. And I, I'm reading, like I said, uh, because you choose for me uh, <laughs> not to go to school, it does not stop me from learning. And that's what I want to instill into these children of today. Can't nobody stop you from learning. I never will forget it. It came to man today. Lord, I'm going to get back on it. Okay, Lord, but let, 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 let's, hit, let's hit this. They was talking about a man that was in prison. It's a couple of films like that. And the guy said, as long as they can't, they can't, they can lock your body up. He said, but they can't lock your mind up. Because they was wondering how people can be in isolation for a year or something. And not go totally, totally crazy. And a lot of them say, you locked up my body, but you didn't lock up my mind. They be in there dreaming, thinking about the past. They constantly keep going. You know what I'm saying? Inhumane treatment. You know what I'm saying? But, Yeah. You know, like I said, it's a lot of issues that need to be placed on the table that's not being addressed. But, uh, like I said, at least when you leave her, leave saying something. Leave saying something. That, teach your children to stand up for justice, to stand up for something that they believe in. Don't just cowardly down and stand, stand around and let life happen to you. Make life happen. 
You know, I'm not about killing nobody. Come on now, let's not get twisted because we got some dingy people out here. Not about doing violence and harming nobody and picking up guns and shooting and all this type of thing, walking the streets. No, let's not do that. You know, let's not get carried away with stuff like that. But um, it's too many other tools that you can put up in your hands to fight. You don't have to fight like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, hopefully, hopefully not. You know, hopefully not. You know what I'm saying? But a soldier is a soldier. A soldier does what a soldier does. Uh, God's getting on me saying, come back to you about this book. Uh, like I said, uh, yeah, uh, they blocked me. I can't go to school until I pay them a thousand or something dollars because I let that loan money go back. Yes, I did. I let the 2000 go back. I wasn't trying to get it. I let it go back because it's stuff that eventually down the road I would have to return and pay. I'm already in debt like a mud. That's just for an associate degree. Don't have my bachelor's. Was attempting to get it. But yeah, I got blocked. I got blocked. But because you blocked me as far as attending a school, I was trying to go to Indiana University because they felt that they could meet my needs. So I'm blocked. I cannot transfer until I pay off a debt. You cannot transfer to a college unless you pay off a debt of the previous school that you attended. They refuse to send your transfer records. And without your transfer original, let, let's do this. Quotation. Your original. <laughs> your original transfer records. You cannot transfer to another school. University college. So it's all good. It's all good, boo-boo. Because -boo. I still can pick up a book. I can go to the library. And I have a lot of things that was already instilled in me. Thanks. Yep. Jefferson Community College, and all my instructors, criminal justice teachers, what was it, uh, that, what was it, a couple of little counties that my teachers was from, you know, so I thank God for all of them, you know, they instilled a lot in me, and they worked with me, that's one thing I can definitely say, Jefferson Community College, it offers you a lot of help, all the help I needed, and then I did better when I was on, uh, when I was on campus. Which blew my mind because I had a professor, a psychology professor. Oh my God, his name should come to me. They didn't like him. He a little bitty man. Oh my God. Oh, but he was powerful. And he ended up passing me. I think I got a B. Yeah, I got a B. I got a B at his class. Yeah, because I thought I was going to see. I got a B in uh, psychology. Wow. But I went on, I attended on campus. So yeah. Because you get more resources when you attend. Online, is reason I'm suffering is because I'm studying online. I was doing online, taking classes online. But I do much better if I'm on campus. So those are the th adjustments that I definitely need to make to receive my bachelor's. And I will get my bachelor's. So God, he don't, he, don't, uh, he don't start something he can't finish. What? God don't start something he can't finish. God, God don't start something he can't finish. <laughs> Who is called encourage yourself? So, like I said, I'm reading this book. I'm watching some uh, things. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm being prepared. One thing I love to um, a shout out to uh, uh, Pastor Wim is that uh, he has always preached about study. You know, be very careful. Include myself. Be very careful who you join. And you, you unite with. Don't just unite with anybody. Don't just run around saying petitions and jump on things. Read about it. Get to understand it. That's what he had, he had uh he had basically commanded in, in some of his sermons. You know, read about it, study it, check them out. Because so many people join things, then they look around like, darn, what did I join? These people run around here killing people. These people around here don't even like my color. Not enjoyed it. <laughs> so be careful about what you join. Read about it. Study about that person. See and hear what that person is about before you join anything. And uh, like I said, include myself. But uh, like I said, though, uh, you know, I, I do what he said. I, I study and I read about things. And I'm not going to run around and talk about so, social justice and uh, poverty without having knowledge of it, you know. And so that's what I've been doing. You know, I'm not going to get to you and be telling you some stuff that I don't know about. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Poverty, I don't need to learn about. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know too much about that. You know, I know about paycheck. I know about low. I know about uh, 
uh, what is it, uh, 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 the uh, regular rate, what is it, being underpaid, you know, never being overpaid, being underpaid, I know what it's like, I, I, I know what it's like to be overqualified for a job, and it's cleaning, how you do it. You know, I know what it's like to be turned away from a job because of your past. I know about that. I got that experience. Mm hmm I got that experience real well. I know what it's like to be ridiculed in school and college, you know, uh, about not being where everybody else is. I know what that's like. Uh, I know what it's like to be last and not first in society. Uh, means struggling. I know what it's like to uh, not have enough gas money to get where you need to be. I know what it's like to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> with a man. And every time you look around, he want to know where you going? Where you going? What time you coming back? Where was you at? Where wasn't you worried? Ah, uh, you said you was going to be. Uh, I also know what it's like to call a man and uh, he's not where he's supposed to be and then it's a problem. <laughs> oh Lord, yeah, I cracked myself up. That was back in the day, you know what I'm saying? I've changed. But yeah, I remember those days, man. I remember those days cooking and cleaning and washing clothes, all those type of things, because I don't like to argue, but I remember arguing, you know, stupid stuff, you used to argue over stupid stuff, you know, you be in a relationship with somebody, you arguing over stupid stuff, uh -uh. I don't want to go to the movies, why don't you want to go, I don't want to go. I don't want to go, why we want to go when we want to sit? Now, you don't want to go with me because you've been cheating on me and you don't want nobody to see you with me because you feel you're going to get busted out. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I pray for relationships. Uh, that's something that uh, I, w I want to discuss, too. I'm getting ready to get out of here. I'm going into an hour, but uh, relationships. You know, uh, I pray that God watches over and mature relationships. I pray that the father be more involved with the children, the, the mother be more involved with the children. I pray for the absentee parent, whether it be female or male, because like I said, I'm familiar with a lot of males. I have a nephew right now, as a matter of fact. He has custody. He's raising his son, you know, and so I've seen it, you know. Uh, my brother ended up raising his son for a minute, so, you know, my child's father, he ended up raising my son after a period, you know, when he wanted to jump back talk about uh, he can do what he want to do while not up in here. <laughs> so, he lived with his daddy. So, uh, like I said, uh, it, uh, it, it, it's, um, uh, hmm, relationships is difficult, especially when you're poor and it shouldn't be if anything it's like the Israelites I heard a pastor talk about said the more they was uh, punished and, and enslaved the, the, uh, uh, and whipped and beat the more they grew the more they was in cap captivity the more they grew and we need to be like that as a people rather than killing and dying and murdering each other we need to, 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 to grow you know what I'm saying I'm not Sitting back saying, well, yeah, <laughs> have some babies. <laughs> have some babies. Make some babies. And let the daddy be in the life. You know what I'm saying? Let the fathers be around. Man, get together. You know what I'm saying? Get together. Be in the child's life. You know what I'm saying? At, at, at any cost. At any cost. Be in your children's life. Say in something positive, negative. You can't be there all the time. It's a lot of organ or whatever. Have some type of arrangement where you can meet and visit with that child. Correspond through records. You got Instagram. You got all types of social media. There's no reason that child shouldn't see your face. You know, regardless of what you're doing, drug addiction, any type of any issue, any situation you're going through. There's too much media out here. And like I said, we still got old school. Write a letter. Write a letter. You know, send some balloons. Send a card. Uh, send some type of little gram to your child. Let your child know that you love them. 
You know what I'm saying? Whether you're in the lab physically or not, you can always be there mentally. Stay in that child's head. That's another thing that angers me about a lot of people when they get on drugs and alcohol. You know what I'm saying? You know, thank God I was still around, from, you know, around my children. But a lot of people, they, the addiction tells them, hey, you know what I'm saying, forget it. They're stealing from their kids and they leave in the house. You know what I'm saying? Then they, when they do try to get better, they feel so ashamed they don't want to go around their kids. Don't be that way. Don't be that way. Go around your, don't go around your children if you don't feel like it at the time. But send that child a letter. I was around a lady and I had suggested that. She was like, I don't want, I don't know my little girl. I know she missed me. And when I talk to her, she starts crying and make me cry. And it makes me not want to stay in, in recovery. And I was like, honey, no, don't do that. I said, you can write a letter. I said, write a letter to that child. Send a card to that child. You know what I'm saying? And she's looking at me, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no. I was talking to her and I was telling her, you know, even though a child's young and she's asking for you, you know what I'm saying? And if she gets mad when you hang up, send a letter to her. Explain to her what's going on. So one day she could pick that card up and she'll look at that card and she'll say, wow, mama was telling me she's having a hard time with addiction. She doesn't know what to do. She's trying to be a better parent, but she can't stop drugging. She can't stop drinking. But at least she wrote me a letter to say that she loves me, that she cares, that she know I exist, you know. So all those things count. All those things count. Forget that pride. We need to lose that pride. Believe me, I go through that. I have to lose it. Forget that pride. Forget that self. Forget self. You're thinking about yourself, what's best for you. Don't think about what's best for you. Think about what's best for that child, especially if you're a person and you produce six or seven kids and you don't have custody or any of them. I'm not knocking you for that because I don't know the circumstances of your life. I just know you, if you're telling me if, if you don't have custody of your kids, then, hey, write a letter. Write a letter. Send some balloons. You know what I'm saying? Send a message through another family relative or something. Just tell them that you love them, that you care if you don't want to be seen right now. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be in that channel. Like, oh, that child is so angry at you that they don't want to see you. It's not going to hurt to send a letter whether they read it or not. Even if they rip it up, write it. Because then when that child is old enough and God hopefully mends their heart and mends their understanding, they can look back and say, Ah, well, you never did nothing for me. And you can say, I wrote you a letter. And then they can say, Ah, that's right, I tore it up. So don't say nothing. <laughs> you done. You done. Yeah, <laughs> you done. When God mends your heart, it makes you confront people. That's, that's what I'm saying. I didn't get it twisted. When God means your heart, it don't make you just hurry up. Oh, I'm glad you, my mom, I'm sorry. Now, I'm going to confront you. Why didn't you take care of me? Where was you at? Why did you keep drinking and drugging? You know, why did you put the drugs before me? Those are questions that kids come up and they want to They want to answer for that. What, why, why weren't you there for me? You know, especially if you was taking care of kids. You had kids and you neglected them and they were sexually abused. That's a big question. You know, and if you don't have an answer, don't try to lie about it and don't run from it. Tell them, I don't have an answer to that. I don't know why. But all I can do is we can try. That's, that's all some children want to hear, even if they're adult children. Then I'm going to try. I'm going to try to mend. I'm going to try to fix this. I know I messed up. Let's pray together. Let's put it in God's hand. God can fix it. God can work it out. I can't do it, but God can do it. But I still have to... Be physical. I have to come in. I have to talk to you. I have to tell you what's going on. You have to tell me how you feel about me. But we have to want to agree together about fixing this situation, about being mother, child. I just, just being in a room with one another. Because sometimes things, it's, the hurt is so bad, you, you're not really qualified to be a mother because maybe someone else raised that child. So just some type of communication is better than none at all is what I'm trying to say. You know, mend wherever possible. And, you know, like I said, I'm talking to people now, you know. Uh, I will. Uh, the conversation go like this. Well, he's not doing nothing for me. He don't want to help with the baby. And I, so I don't want him around me now. Don't do that, boo-boo. Stop that. You, you talking about you. Talk about the child. What's best for the child? Let that child be around that parent. Because he, he don't want to be with you. Or he's upsetting you. That don't have nothing to do with the child. Let him spend time with that child. Let him be in that child's life. Let him video chat that child, whatever. If he don't bring nothing to the table. If he don't have money for child support. If he don't have a job. She don't have a job. She don't have. Let that communicate. Let that, per, that, let that self. 
Let the sales, let the word, let the presence, let that be child support. Let that be, be enough for them. Let that be enough. We need to stop bickering and separating in relationships. Relationships are very vital. We need to get, honey, please. We need, we, we need to get them and we need to hold on to them. We need to stop fighting and, and bickering over petty stuff. You know, like I said, my children are grown, but as far as people I see now with kids, you know, some relationships I see people together, you know, the man and the woman together trying to be with the kids. But quite often, I mean, I don't know if the chick got a man or not, but I'm just saying. When you have kids, try to work, put a relationship first. Put a lot of that squabbles down. Stop trying to be mighty, mighty, mighty woman. Ah, you know what I'm saying? You're not bringing nothing to the table. I'm the only one bringing something to the table. You're not doing nothing. Well, okay, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You know, you find being alone or you being without that person, that's cool. I mean, just having your mind. Don't, don't come back later on, five years later, and talking about, you know, uh, you see the person with somebody else. And then you want to come back talking about, well, hey, I should have waited. I should have, could have, would have. Don't should have, could have, would have nothing. You know, put some that, we put too much uh, uh, important on um, a uh, uh, financial game. Don't get it twisted. I did request child support for my kids. It was laid on, but it was mostly the child for their parents. They didn't want to do nothing, maybe. You know what I'm saying? In one situation, I got two fathers. So, I mean, but other than that, yeah. You know, they chose to spend time on and off. You know, not a lot, but on and off, they would see him. You know, but I was that type of person. Now, you don't need to see him. You ain't got no money. You know, I was doing all that little silly, petty stuff. So that's why I know about it. You know, and it was stupid. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You know, thank God that they, you know, they they are in each other's lives. You know what I'm saying? You know, they're around each other and stuff now. But, like I said, being in a relationship is better than being without one. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about staying in a relationship and get beat up and let your kid get beat up or less or nothing like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't don't bring a whole lot of petty stuff on that, you know, to the table. Where you going, what you doing? I'm paying the bill, so you gotta tell me where you going and what you doing and you got to stay in the house and you can't talk to this part all that type of stuff, man. Squash it. Squash it. And let a man be a man and a woman be a woman. You know what I'm saying? and handle your business that way. Because if one can chase a thousand, two can chase, chase ten thousand. Just imagine you got somebody in the house, they watching the kid while you go to work or whatever, either way it go. You know what I'm saying? A child can grow up and say, I know what my father's like, and believe it or not, man, a father is very important in your life. I know it, that's one of the aspects of my life that still drives at me, you know what I'm saying, gnaws at me. I wish I had spent time with my father for, for whatever reason. He came into my life after I was 10. I mean, he was there evidently, but as far as me totally being aware and wanting to have that communication with him, I was about 10 when I called him. We had a discussion, you know, but uh, my mother already had a boyfriend, so that was a factor in her too, you know. I don't know what was going on with my daddy, but, you know, it was different things, you know, that played a part in it, but I, I, I wish I had known more about my father. I wish I had known, like, what is it in me? That makes me want to fight for these causes because it's not, it wasn't in my mother that way. You know what I'm saying? Some, what, a little bit, but as deep as it is, I believe it came from my father's side and I didn't get to know them. So those are things missing in my life where I know that a father is very important. Very important. You know, especially to a young man, it's very important. So. Uh, I'm going to say this and then I'm gone. Like I said, uh, my grandson, we was in the park playing, and this guy came to the park with his two kids, a little girl, a little boy. I think he said they was three and five. And so my grandson, he's a three. I think he's a little <laughs> He's two. And uh, he acted like he's four because he's very intelligent. So we was playing and everything, and he got on a slamboard, board, and for some reason he got fur in him, and he didn't want to go down. So all of a sudden, this guy, he was playing with his kids, and the little girl wanted to slide down. But my grandson, he's sitting there like, uh -uh, I'm not sliding down this one. <laughs> and so I kept I'm coaching him, coaching him, coaching him. That man spoke one word to my grandson. I kid you not. He said, go on, little man. You could do it. My grandson held on tight, but he slid down that sliding board. And that's what I'm saying, what the difference is between a man and a woman. And how important it is for a man to be in your life. You know. And so with that, think about it. 
Like I said, I need my Jericho 10, and that's what I'm, I'm going on a mission to find, my Jericho 10. God bless you. God keep you. Have a wonderful, marvelous day. It might be a time in between here when I'm talking to you because a lot of things is on the table. Like I said, I have a petition. I would love for you to sign it. It's through change.org. It's a petition to, uh, for guardianship to stop having so much power and authority over people without giving them the necessary uh, health care that they need. And it's about relinquishing medical records without a person having an attitude and without me paying 200 something dollars for the records. I don't believe that's necessary unless you're covering up something. So I want those issues addressed. Uh, like I said, I'm going to keep on fighting. I'm going to keep on writing. And I'm going to keep on bringing this to people's attention until I get results. Like I said, come and join me. Vigilantes for Jesus. Um, B-I-G-I-L-A-N-T-T-E-S-F-O-R-J-E-S-U-S-I-N-C at gmail.com. Bye-bye.